how we'll kind of react to some of the Premier League games we saw this weekend. A lot of Premier League games this weekend, a lot of interesting ones. Obviously, we talked about Liverpool, Chelsea. We're not going to go too much in depth with that. Tottenham came back and bounced back from that really bad loss that they suffered to um, to Bournemouth. Now getting four goals, getting past West Ham 4-1. And as I expected, dominated the game, created an, a lot of clear-cut out opportunities, played the game in West Ham's half, took advantage of a West Ham team that could be easy to play against, as I predicted. You know, um, you know, I think Tottenham have solved their early season issues now. Yes, they had that blimp against Brighton, but besides that blimp in which they still scored two goals, this is a Tottenham team that got two past French Varos, three past United, three past Carabac, three past Brentford. They're starting to get goals. They're starting to create, not just create clear-cut out opportunities, but take advantage of that, of, be, of being in the opposition half, of playing the game in their half, and showing that cutting edge, and, and taking advantage of opportunities when they come. And for me, that's all Tottenham needed to solve, because their early season woes were not a woes in terms of the way that they approach the game or how they dominated the game or how they control the game and it was the problem was not the football the problem was the toothlessness of the attack the the lack of cutting edge not being clinical enough but with those if the you know Tottenham are able to continue this and get get rid of those issues this is a team that is really can play some really really brilliant football and that should be competing into the top, in the top four cuz I, I i think they can you know they can control a game against any team in the premier league that's how good their football is that's how good their football has been under Ange Postecoglou and now it's whether they can be consistent that they can continue to show this cutting edge that they've that they've shown over the past few weeks now and if they if they're able to you know maintain the energy levels and not have that late season drop off like they did last season um, but overall impressive performance from Tottenham and again I don't think there'll be many games in the Premier League in which Tottenham doesn't play the better football against the opposition which is crazy to say based on what we've seen over Tottenham over the past few years before Postacoglu uh, it's a different team United take on Brentford United most impressive performance probably of the last two seasons, like, like, or this season and last season, from, you know, going back to last season, probably been the most important performance. They looked on the front foot. They looked attack-minded. They dominated the game. They took advantage. They were clinical. Um, they got numbers forward. Um, you know... They had good moments of possession, and then even in the moments that they didn't have possession, they looked pretty comfortable. Uh, you know, Brentford, it was very unlucky how United got, you know, conceded that goal um, to Brentford, but then the bounce back, you know, and also conceding that goal despite how Man United played that first half and conceding that goal, I, um, l that later on, you know, those are the sort of goals that can kill a team. And I thought, wow, with the way United have been recently, um, you know, the performances we've seen them, the way that they played in that first half, I thought they were much better. And to go down 1-0 with a late first half goal, I thought, uh-oh, this United team is about to, you know, about to lay an egg in this second half because I thought that was a, you know, a huge potential psychological breakdown that they could have gone on as a team. But they bounced back and continued to fight and immediately got that follow-up, which I thought it was really, really huge because I thought it shifted the momentum back to United. Got Old Trafford back into it. Hoyland got on the score sheet 2-1, and they looked comfortable from there. Brentford never really looked like threatening. Impressed performance from Manchester United. Very, very impressed. Um, Aston Villa, 3-1 win over Fulham. Um, uh, as I expected, I thought Villa, it, this was a professional performance from a professional team. Um... You know, Fulham is not a, you know, Fulham is not a walk in the park, especially when you go down at Carvin Cottage, down 1-0 after five minutes, could be a difficult outfit. But Aston Villa, just a professional performance by a professional team, and they've been that ever since when I got to the club. Brighton, 1-0 win over Newcastle. 
it's official Eddie Howe will remain as a Newcastle manager. There's no going to England. I thought Newcastle had periods of good playing this one. Um, I do have to say, uh, I was interested to see. I thought this was a good measuring stick for Newcastle because there's a little bit of a... Um, there's a little bit of a, 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 a question mark with them and what we've seen from them so far this season. Um, big con concentration lapses for Newcastle. Um, ba uh, uh, Brighton played very ugly sort of football, but they got the job and they got the results. In Newcastle, they have some issues that they need to address going forward, I do have to say. Um, great win for Brighton. Leicester in the battle of a, uh, of potential, you know, you know, rele you know, this teams that got promoted, two teams that might be in that relegation battle. Leicester picking up points when they need to. I said these are the sort of games Leicester need to pick up points in. They go away to Southampton and St. Mary's and they pick up all three professional performances. And I, this is the sort of games where it makes me, you know, really reaffirm my position in Leicester City being able to stay up because I just think they'll have that belief that they'll stay up because of what they've done um, in the past few years or so, making top four, reaching the, you know, winning the Premier League, playing European football a few years ago, I think Leicester, uh, winning the FA Cup a few years ago. Leicester City, good, uh, great win for them. Everton, them also, great win for Ipswich, for Everton. You want to take advantage of the, you know, of games like this going up against weaker opposition, um, two 0 I think their really really bad start to the season is a little bit of a doesn't really send the right message because I I don't think that's I don't think Everton is as bad as what you know that start of the season says they are, and I think we saw that in this game again professional display from them never really looked like they were threatened and 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 Ilman India he has some quality by the way. Do I have to say? He got that early goal for uh, for Everton. Mm -hmm. Before we move on to the two title contender games, Nottingham Forest one 0 win over Crystal Palace. Chris Wood getting the winner in the sixty five minute. Um, pretty even game across the board, but it's Nottingham Forest that's able to get the three points and continue on their really good start to their season. You know, a lot of us thought maybe that they can be in the relegation battle. Well, they've only lost one from their first eight. They're sitting with 13 points, eighth place in the Premier League. Tied was Tottenham, seventh. Only two points behind Brighton, a fifth. Really good start from them, uh, from 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 Nottingham Forest. And I think they've essentially played themselves out of any potential, you know, out of any potential um, relegation battle that they can be in. Being managed by Nuno Espirito Santos, professional team, professional display, and I, in my opinion, I think he's a really, really good manager. We know what he did at the Wolves, at Tottenham. Nobody succeeds at Tottenham, um, but yeah, good for Nine Camp Forest. Uh -huh, <laughs> okay, where do we start off with Arsenal? Okay, let's start off with Arsenal again. Arsenal. Another game that they go down to 10 men, this time it's denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity. William Saliba, um, William Saliba taking, taking down, uh, taking down Evan, uh, Evan Nielsen, um, when he was through on goal. Now, in my opinion, it's a difficult one, but Evan Nelson. He's through on goal from the middle of the pitch. It's 40 yards away, which... Is that an obvious goal scoring opportunity? Evan Nelson still has to do a lot. He has to beat his man with the dribble. Um, he has to remain composed. But at the end of the day, he's probably getting a shot off one-on-one. -on -one. And in that situation, it's a difficult one. But Saliba, you cannot give the referee an opportunity to give a red in that moment. And he did that. It's a split second decision. It's a little hard, you know. I have sympathy for Saliba, and it's a player that hasn't shown history of making these sort of mistakes. So it's someone I'm willing to give a pass on. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's a difficult um, split second decision, and Saliba just panicked a little bit, 
took him down, red card, completely changes the game, completely changes how Arsenal go about it with a red card. They're having, you know, Mikel Arteta having to shift sub players off, bring on, you know, bring on um, players, having to sub out players that he brought on because of how frantic it got. And yeah, board miss. It seemed like as the game went, you know, kept going on and on. It seemed like if anybody was going to get the winner, it was born with they got the two goals from Ryan Christie, the Scottish International, and then Cliverd with the penalty in the 79th minute. And it puts their title race hopes in a massive, massive nail because 17 points from eight games is not horrible, but already four points behind Liverpool and three points behind City. I think that's pretty bad because Arsenal... They didn't want to replicate the start that they had last season. They wanted to start off better than that. Not because last season's start is bad, but because it requires even better to beat City. And, yeah, just a bad result for them. Um, you know, and even going down to 10 men, they, need, they still need to go on and win the game against weaker opposition and... You know, these, you know, if, if I'm Mikel Arteta, um, you know, and the, am I this Arsenal players, I am trying to flush it. But something they got to stop doing is stop putting these referees in position to have to make a decision. You know, don't even allow the referee to get to that point. And this one is a, a little bit difficult um, with William Saliba because it's a panic moment. But there's been other red cards this season that they've allowed the referee the opportunity to send them off. You know? Don't even give the referee a chance. City 2-1 win over Wolves. Um, a late, late winner from John Stones. Um, that um, we are, that uh, so it's a weird. So the goal initially, you know, so the goal happened. They're celebrating. Eventually, the referee whistles off sides. Like 10, 15 seconds later after the goal happened. Then VAR comes to intervene and announces a goal. That was a weird thing because I thought VAR was the was originally the ones that whistled it offside with semi-automated um, auto review. But then they went on with VAR to, I guess, do another review and this time check whether or not Bernardo Silva was actually interfering with play. Because um, he was offside, but there's whether he was interfering with the goalkeeper. Um Initially, I thought he was because Jose saw sort of does a and the show gets pushed out of the way, and um, and then the header came. But if you're looking at it, before John Stones gets his head on the ball, Jose saw has a clear, you know, ability to look at the ball. Nobody, no thing is in his way. I think eventually they got the decision right. Wolves, I talked about how open that they've been. They decided to. Close up shop a little bit, only with twenty percent possession. Didn't create much enough going forward. They had that early goal from Stan uh, Strand Larsen, um, which maybe you know gave them that out to go a little bit more defensive because of how open they they've been. Guardiola amazing goal in the thirty third minute, and Wolves they've conceded a lot of goals by being open and giving up a lot of space, but they've also conceded a ridiculous amount of set piece goals. And it's this time another one that gets them done again. And, you know, they're sitting, you know, 20th with seven losses from eight games and only one point through the first eight. They really need to get their act together because, yeah, they don't, you know, they don't want to find themselves in a position where they they might get relegated. Thank you guys for tuning in to the GSMC Soccer Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content and updates. Thank you once again and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's go.